الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله هو الرزاق ذو القوة المتين صدق الله العظيم Some of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes are such that they are normally used with some other attribute. Most of the time they are not used by themselves. We talked about some of those earlier in the previous sessions and today also we will be talking about another one out of those and that is Al-Mateen. Normally this attribute Al-Mateen is used with Al-Qawi, in combination with Al-Qawi. In Qur'an Al-Kareem this attribute has been used only once. And again is used with Al-Qawi. Inna Allah huwa al-Razzaq, dhul quwa al-Mateen. Quwa and Mateen, they use together. And this is why it will be the best to understand them together so we can understand the real attachment between the, between the two attributes and we can also understand the meaning and the connection of these attributes. Quwa means strength, power. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Qawi. He is the most powerful one. With that, when we use the word mateen, it means firmness. So Allah is strong and is firm in His strength, which means there is no way of having any weakness. Every human being, regardless of how much quwa the person would have, every creature generally, but it's easy to understand ourselves, that regardless of how strong the person is, for the time being this person can be qawi, can be very strong. But that matana, matin, is not there. Because there is always a room for losing that quwa from one of the angles, from somewhere. So that firmness in this strength is not there. A heavy weight lifter, when he lifts the weight, there is a possibility that he can pull his muscle and not be able to lift it at all. And then if he lifts it, there is a possibility that it would fall off his hand at any time. That possibility is there. See in the aeroplanes, they always keep a pilot and a co-pilot. They don't just keep one pilot because one thing, something can happen to one person and what will happen to the plane then in this situation? So human beings, we do realize our weakness. And in the cars, we always make sure that the car has a, uh, what do you call it, the spare tire. Why? Regardless of how strong that car is, at any time you can just it will give up. You have a flat tire, you may be able to change it because you have a spare tire. And then people try to buy some extra coverage. So if anything happens, I don't get stuck. Someone would come to help. All of these are signs that quwa is there, strength is there. But matana is not there, which means firmness in that strength is not there. So regardless of how much quwa strength, power, human beings would claim. They cannot claim to have matana with it, which means firmness in that strength. We have the most powerful technology of a, uh, controlling people through the air. But our technology would give up if the air is blowing too heavy, if there is a storm, rainstorm, heavy storms are there, everything gives up. We can do nothing. So, quwa is there. 
We claim the quwa, but matana can never be even claimed by us. Which means firmness in these strength, in this strength, we can't even claim it. As far as the quwa that we claim, inshallah, we'll, we will talk about that, that how true that claim is and how much quwa and strength we have. But the point is, at least, it's something that we claim it. And we feel that we have it, we have a lot of strength. And people claim strength, countries claim strength, human beings, individuals, they claim strength. But every quwa can fail at any time. Every power has the possibility of failing at any time. And there are a lot of different ways how this power would fail. A very strong person, very strong player, he had a diarrhea, couldn't come. That's it. It's gone, flat. Quwa was there, strength was there, but matana is never there. Which means firmness in that quwa. So Allah is qawi and mateen. Now we can understand what does qawi and mateen means with this combination of qawi and mateen. He is strong and with that strength, there is firmness in the strength, which means there is no possibility of weakness getting there. And with every creature, no matter how strong that might be, there is end to that strength. And at some point, it just gives up. I have seen a situation. A person brings a tractor. And very powerful tractor. And he said, I can finish this work in one week's time. And this is this type of tractor, this, this, this. And he introduces his tractor that I... I mean, I bought it for this much, I paid this much, and this is how many horsepowers, whatever else. Subhanallah, this is something that I experienced myself. After two days, the person tells me that something hit one of the pipes of the tractor, of the, this tractor, and all the oil went out of the pipe. So now, it doesn't have that power because hydraulic power depends on that oil. And the hydraulic pump doesn't work because of that small pipe having a hole in it. This huge tractor that worth 50, 60,000, some of them 100, 200,000 dollars. And they go even more. Now, something that expensive and according to us then, it's so strong, it would do this, this, it can just tear up the whole building in no time. A small hole in one of the pipes will just stop the whole function of it. Nothing is going to, you can keep on shouting that I spent this much. So what? You have to fix the pipe. So, there is no matana, which means no firmness in the strength of anything in this life. The only firmness in the strength is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the only one who has matana in his quwa. And read the history, how many strong people came in the world. How many strong rulers came. How many strong, strong countries came? They're all history now. I mean, there were some of these powers in the world that when you read the history, it looks, if you close your eyes and just read the history and don't look what happened after, at the end, it looks like this power, there was no possibility that this power would ever end. And then, all of a sudden, it perishes, it goes away. As if it never existed. Quwa is there. Matana is not there. Firmness in the quwa and the strength is not there. And this is the same situation with all of our parts of the bodies, with our lives, and with everything that we do. Anything and everything that we do. We can make the strongest things. Yes, we can have a lot of strength. We can use a lot of strength. But we cannot have firmness in that strength. For how long we would be young and strong? As soon as the person gets to the age when he is really strong, when you get really strong, after that, what's after that? Allahu alladhi khalaqakum min da'af. Thumma ja'ala min ba'di da'af in quwa. Allah created you out of weakness. Out of that weakness, He gave you some strength. Thumma ja'ala min ba'di quwwatin da'afan wa shayba. After that strength, again weakness and old age. 
Before it was only weakness, now weakness and old age also. He creates whatever he likes. Nothing in this world, nothing in this world, this is something that we have to keep it very clear in our mind, nothing in this world has matana with quwa, which means firmness and strength. So, let anyone claim that we have strength, I'm powerful, I have this much power, I have this much, I have controlled all of these things in the world, but there is no firmness in it. Either that strength will go, or this person would go. One of the two would go very soon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who is, whose quwa, whose strength, has firmness. Which means it never goes away. He was always as strong as he is now, and he would always be as strong as he is now. No difference. The amazing part is, if a person would really love to be very strong, and I would now tell you, should you pray for being very strong or not? So you become very strong. What will happen after that? It's always when you get to the peak of something, then you have to come down. So if you get very strong that you can never get stronger, then that simply means from there on, you will be coming downward. If a person is climbing a tower, <coughs> and is a very high tower, it may be better for that person not to get to the peak of it. Because once he gets to the peak, there is no room for him to get any, any further up. Now the only choice is he has to come down. This is same thing with our strength. Once it gets to the peak of it, now the person is, mashallah, very strong. He's to the age where now he never experienced that type of strength in his body. Simply means, now the downfall will come. So matana is never there. Now, let's deal with the quwa, with the strength that we have. A strength, of course, is something that naturally human beings love. And this is why whoever has any type of strength, they would love to claim it, introduce it, prove it to others, and be proud of it. And this is why a lot of time you see people out of humbleness will say, no, I'm very weak. It's com considered to be humbleness. That, okay, this person is considering himself to be very weak. So, weakness <coughs> is not something that human beings would consider as a high quality. Quwa, strength, power is something that is considered to be good. Yes, let me have my strength. And this is why people in the world, they try to get as much strength as they can in all different ways. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says about Himself that if there is anyone who has any quwa in the world, it's me. We get very proud of ourselves if we can carry a heavy rock. That is heavy. And other people are not able to carry it, you go carry it, you lift it up, or there are weights, you know, they go to the gym and let everyone look at you, pull your sleeves up and lift it up. <coughs> What's the weight of this rock or whatever weight we are lifting in comparing to what this whole world is about? Look at the quwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanallah, that we normally neglect. Let's forget about things that are outside of this world. Just this globe that we live in, what's holding it? We normally say it's in the air. What's holding it? We see the birds flying above us. And we say because of the wings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Mulk, says to us, أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا إِلَى الطَّيْرِ فَوْقَهُمْ صَافَّاتٍ وَيَقْبِضْنَ Don't they see at the birds above them, who sometimes they have their wings open, and sometimes they even close their wings, and still they are in the air. مَا يُمْسِكُهُنَّ إِلَّا الرَّحْمَانِ No one is holding them up there, except Rahman subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the only one who is holding them up there. And that small bird is just reminding us your whole dunya is 
in the air without wings. This dunya has no wings, but it's in the air. And if it was solid, we'll say there is something holding it that we can't see, but it's traveling too. It's moving. It goes round. It's moving. Subhanallah. Such a heavy thing. Imagine the weight of the whole globe with everything that's in it. And then it moves. And what's holding it? People try to take pictures outside here, there, nothing. Nothing is holding it. It's in the air. We look at the skies above us, those stars, we look at the sun, we look at the moon, we look at the stars. What's holding all of these? مَا يُمْسِكُهُنَّ إِلَّا الرَّحْمَانِ Rahman is holding all of those. And how is he holding them? Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have to be there to hold these things. He created that strength that will hold them, which simply means there is some type of power that Allah created out there that holds these objects up there. How strong that power is, is a power that we have never seen. We can't see with our eyes. But I know something is holding this whole globe up there. There is something. You take a ball and you keep on hitting it with the air, with pressure from the bottom. You don't let it come down. So this air is holding it up there. There is power in the air. There is pressure in this air that is not allowing the ball to come down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created some type of power that we don't even feel it. It's not that something is continuously hitting the earth. Subhanallah, what type of strength and powers He has created out there? We don't even realize it. And the strength that He has created, it cannot be seen. It's something that no one has seen. Today when we do our research, and we find out about some of these strengths that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in different things, some of this power that He has created, and then we are able to use some of these, we feel so proud of ourselves, look, we have this much strength, we have this much power. If we get so proud of ourselves by using a little bit of this power, atomic power, or the power of the water, or the power of the air, the power of the wind, the power of the, uh, uh, of the oil, that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hydraulic powers, we may call it. I mean, all of these different type of powers that the, we use in the electric, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put so much power. All of these powers, when we are able to use a little bit of it, we feel so proud of our, of our souls. Imagine how Qawi would be the one who created all of these powers. How qawi he would be. The company that makes tractors, aeroplanes, they have limit of how many they would make a year. They can make more than that. They can't afford to make more than this. Whereas they are not creating this power. They are just using it to find out that this power is there in these oils and this air and this water and this is how you make the pump and make use of it. But just to be able to use the power, we need so much energy, we need so much money, we need so many resources. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He's creating all of these powers, subhanallah, there is no limit. How many lions are getting born a year? Is there any end to it? That no more lions because the strength was uh, ended over there. We don't have that power that, that was that, that type of power that was, that was put into the lions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qudra and his quwa, his strength can be seen by this, that how many types of powers he has created in the world. And then he blessed us with so many different types of powers. It's not only the power for lifting things, different types of powers that he has created. For example, some people have the power of sight. And there are birds that can see under the ground. If the water is 200 feet under the ground, the bird will see it. This is the power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this bird of sight, power of sight. 
There are some animals who have the power of hearing. So much power in the hearing that something that moves far away from them, they would just figure out what's moving, what direction is moving to, and right away they make their plans accordingly. Animals that have the power of smelling things. And from far they can smell their food and their enemies. This is why people who go for hunting, they try to cheat the deers by... They do so many different things and one of the things, I don't know if anyone is here is hunting, they even sell the urine of the uh, deers so that people would use it on their jackets and things, so the deer won't be able to smell human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given these different type of powers. And with that we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a spiritual power also. In all the other type of powers, anyone can have more power than human beings. Physical strength, human beings cannot compete with animals. Power of sight, there are animals who have it better than human beings. Power of hearing, there are animals who have it better than human beings. Power of being fast, fast running, animals have it better than human beings. Power of tasting, there are animals who have it better than human beings. You name a power and a strength, and animals have it better than us, or something that is out there in the world that will be more powerful than human beings. Things that we make. The only thing where no one can compete with human beings is the spiritual power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given human beings. There is a very amazing hadith in Sunan al-Tirmizi, in Kitab al-Tafsir, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah lamma khalaq al-ard. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this earth, ja'ala tamid. This earth started shaking and moving. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the mountains on this earth. So that it won't move anymore. Balance the whole earth with these mountains. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Quran, أَلَمْ نَجْعَلِ الْأَرْضَ مِهَادَ وَالْجِبَالَ أَوْتَادَ We made the earth, uh, the, uh, the earth flat and then so that you can walk on it and then we put firm mountains on it that are just like nails. Just like we have the screws on the wall that are holding things up. Same thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word awtad, which means they are just like pegs, they are, they are like nails that are holding the earth in its proper place. And they do not allow it to move and shake. This is balancing it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the mountains on this earth and they held the earth firmly, balanced the whole thing. So, فَعَجِبَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Angels were very surprised with the firmness of these mountains. And they said, يَا رَبَّنَا أَخَلَقْتَ مَا هُوَ أَشَدُّ مِنَ الْجِبَالِ have you created anything that is more firm and strong than these mountains? Because they have never seen anything like this. They never thought mountains can be so strong they can hold the whole world in its place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, yes, I have created something that is stronger than these mountains. Al-Hadid. The iron. You have Hammers, tractors made out of metal, and you break the mountains with it. Al Hadith, I have created the metal that is stronger than these mountains. So they asked, Ya Rabbana, Akhalakta ma huwa ashaddu min al Hadith? Have you created anything that is stronger than the metal? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Yes. That is fire. You put it into the uh, put the metal into the fire, it's gonna melt it. The fire is stronger. So they're even more surprised now. Ya Rabbana, 
أَخَلَقْتَ مَا هُوَ أَشَدَّ مِنَ النَّارِ Have you created anything that is more powerful than the fire? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, yes, na'am. Al-ma, the water. You throw water into the fire, puts it up, puts it out, that's it. So, Ya Rabbana, أَخَلَقْتَ مَا هُوَ أَشَدُّ مِنَ الْمَا Have you created anything that is more powerful than water? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Naam, yes, Al-Hawa, the wind that carries all the water and take it from here to there. You see big waves in the ocean, they are all from the wind. If we try to just look at that strength and that power, if we try to create that wave, just one wave, just like the wave that we see in the ocean, how many machines we would need of how many horsepowers before we can create just one wave, one wave that will just go to a certain point. And here you see the waves, when they come with their strength, they can pull anything. People who haven't experienced it, they really don't even know what this is all about. And of course, the only clue we have is by knowing that when the huge waves come, and they destroy, they take homes, they take everything, and with tsunami and everything, then we see, subhanAllah. And what was driving all of this water? Is the air. The force of the air that's behind it, that's drive all this water. So they asked, Ya Rabbana, أَخَلَقْتَ مَا هُوَ أَشَدُّ مِنَ الْهَوَىٰ Have you created anything that is more powerful than the wind? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, yes, na'am. And that thing is very amazing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the malaika, the thing that is more powerful than the wind. Now keep everything in mind from the beginning of the hadith till here. That will give us the real sense of what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is telling us. He counted every strength that you can have in the world. And at the end then he's telling us there is something that's more powerful than this. And that is Ibn Adam. تَصَدَّقَ بِصَدَقَةٍ فَأَخْفَاهَا عَنْ شِمَالِهِ When a human being gives a charity with his right hand and the left hand doesn't know what he has given. That charity is more powerful than even the swing and wind and all the other type of powers that are created in this world. Because the sadaqa will put off the fire of Jahannam, something that you can never put it off by anything that you have in, in this world. Lost. This is, what is this? This is the spiritual power. This is what I was mentioning, that the strongest power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, that is given to any of his creatures, is the spiritual power. Nothing is stronger than that. Anbiya alayhimu salatu wassalam, with all of their achievements, in spite of having such a hostile environment, and animosity all around, people trying to stop them from doing their work. They are trying their best to put every obstacle on their way so that they can do their work. What allowed these Anbiya والسلام, to do that work and continue doing it? Is that spiritual power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with. Not to talk about Anbiya والسلام, they are too great. Let's take a simple example. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu. After Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa passed away, and he became the Khalifa, there was a big question at that time, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have prepared an army under the leadership of Usama ibn Zayd radiyallahu anhu. That army has all the strong people out of Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een. Now, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa passed away, they heard that the superpowers in the world and some other powers, they all are planning to attack Muslims at Medina Munawwara because they know that people, these people have got weak now. And this is the time to do anything you want to do, uh, to, do to these people. This is the prime time because if you give them time now, they will get back together. So while they are now upset, they are not feeling like doing anything, they are too sad and 
they're now divided also a little bit because some people think now what's the sense of doing anything we used to do it when we see the prophet you know, it's all when you you leave you, you lose the loved ones in the family what happens and sahaba radhwanullahi alayhi ajma'in's love for rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is men is something that we can't even imagine how much love they had for rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam because we haven't loved even our own parents as much as they loved Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so now the question was with all of those people planning to attack us here should we send this army and every sahabi's opinion was no we should not we shouldn't now because the situation have changed circumstances have changed at that time that was a priority now priorities have changed because what if those people will attack us in medina we have no one to defend ourselves and after everyone gives his opinion umar radiyallahu very strongly comes with his opinion no we should never and you know how umar was in his firmness and especially when he stands with a sword that no one should say that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam have died this is his situation now so he the need to control him now because they lost rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they are just out of control. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu at that time gets up. After everyone gives his opinion, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says, Do you think I would stop something that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was planning to do? Umar radiallahu anhu gets up. What do you mean? You're going to send this army out? Who is going to defend us in Medina Munawwara? And subhanallah, we would think Abu Bakr may have some plan in his mind and he would say, how about we get together, we do this and we will use, we will invite those people and we'll get help. And Abu Bakr's answer was totally different. He says, forget about enemies. Let the dogs come and attack us and they rip our bodies apart, our bodies and the bodies of our wives and bodies of our children, let them do it if I know that this would happen to us, I would still send that army out because we are here just because so that we can fulfill the orders of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if we stand with disobeying Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then what direction are we going to? Then he says to Umar, Jabbarun fil jahiliya, khuwarun fil Islam. Such a strong person in jahiliya, showing your strength, your power, getting so weak in Islam now. Oh, I'm sorry. And he sends them out. And subhanallah, the result was, when they send that army out, all the other people stop thinking, if these people at this time have so much strength to send that huge army out to that small portion, then if we confront them, how much army they would have for us. And that stopped all the people. But what made Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu make that decision at that time? This is what we were just mentioning. That is the spiritual strength and power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed human beings. This is the strongest power that is given to any of the creatures. And every power that is in the world is really blow this power. Always remember this. Why? A spiritual power simply means it's a power of connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you connect yourself to al qawiyul mateen how can you have anything that is more powerful than that? There is light here. It glows very light. I mean, it has so much light that you can't even be close to it. And someone tells you because this light works on 220 watts. This is not one of those that works with normal electric, 110. Don't even touch this plug. Anything that you plug into this plug is going to burn out because there is too much strength over there. It's 220, it's not 110. Anything gets connect to that strong plug will have that strength. If it cannot take it, it will burn out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al qawiyyul al mateen When anyone connects himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the quwa of Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this person starts having that type of strength. And human beings have been given that spiritual strength 
that they can be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And regardless of how much they connect, they are not going to burn out. Their strength will always be useful and they will always be having more and more outcome because of that connection, that strength that they're getting from Al-Qawi, Al-Mateen subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the strongest person is the person who have connected himself with Al-Qawi Al-Mateen. That is the strongest person. This is why we see that Anbiya alayhimu salatu wassalam, they were never afraid of anything in this life. Their fear was of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reason was because they see their connection with al qawi al-Mateen, when they have seen that strength, then they look at every other strength they see, what is this? This is nothing. No strength is worthy of even considering it to be a power of a strength. Comparing to the strength and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Someone has a hammer and he says, this is a very strong hammer. Then someone else runs and says, wait, I'll show you what strength means. And he goes back home and he brings something that plugs into the power. And then he says, look, use this hammer. And it's a drill. This, this drill is, it works like a hammer also and then you can just... Hammer things with it. And now he realizes, my hammer was nothing comparing to this power hammer. And now, another person comes and he says, what is this? And he brings a huge tractor. And he says, look, use this here. And this is how he's going to just pick it up. You're trying to demolish the whole house brick by brick. I'll just show you how to pick the whole thing up. Now the person would really see, oh, subhanAllah, this is strength. So a person who have seen the strength of that tractor, to him, these hammers mean nothing. A person who have seen the quwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to him, anything else means nothing. That is the quwa. That is the strength. And that is when a person really gets his tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the person realizes the quwa of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran al kareem gives us a very... Amazing example of quwa, different type of powers that he has created. And it will just give us a little understanding of what type of quwa is there out there. Sayyidina Sulaiman alayhi salatu was was informed that there is a queen, and I'm making this long story very short, I'm sure most of you know it in detail, that there is a queen there who worships the sun. Now Sulaiman wanted to give her the message of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he asked her to come to her so he can talk to her. He was informed that she has a castle that has 365 windows on each side. Because she worships the sun and the uh, the castle has been designed, structured in such a way that each day the sun rises, it would come in front of one of these windows. So she would do the worship, she would worship the sun at that time. And when it's setting, it will be in front of the opposite window. So she would be that way, that direction, and she would be worshipping the sun at that time. Now see the hadith, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, don't do sajda and don't do salah at the time of sunrise and sunset, because people who do the ibadah of the sun, they make sujood to the sun at that time. So this is what she used to do. Such a, imagine the size of that castle, that would have 365 windows on each side of it. Sulaiman alayhi salatu wa salam, his setting, with his people, and he finds out that she is coming, she is on her way to him in Palestine. So he asks the people around him and says, Quran speaks now. Who can bring me her castle? Who can bring her castle to me? In those days you're talking about this. Nowadays, we think that people are backward, they don't understand what we have these days. But if they read Quran, they will know that there, is, there are things in Quran that they haven't, they haven't even thought about up to this day. 
سقال عفریت من الجن انا آتیک به قبل ان تقوم من مقامک there was a big jinn a powerful jinn sitting there he says I can do it it's easy and I can do it so fast that by the time you get up as he's sitting before you are standing up the castle will be right here imagine the strength that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to that jinn and not only bringing it, of course bringing it without breaking anything, without destroying anything, without hurting the design of it or anything. And carry the whole castle the way it is. And just put it over here. Placed it here. That's it. And another man sitting there. This is not the second person speaking. It's not jinn now. قَالَ الَّذِي عِنْدَهُ عِلْمٌ مِّنَ الْكِتَابِ A person who had knowledge of the book that was given to Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam. And he knew something from that book. It's very special. He says, Ana atika bihi qabla an yartadda ilayka tafuk. He says to that jinn, you're taking too long. You're taking too long to bring it here. I'll bring it before you can just blink your eyes. And Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam says to him, okay, bring it. And he blinks his eyes and her castle is right there. And this is not something that we are seeing from the history. Or even from hadith, this is in Qur'an. فَلَمَّا رَآهُ مُسْتَقِرًّا عِنْدَ When he saw that the castle was firmly established just next to him. مُسْتَقِرًّا عِنْدَ قَالَ هَذَا مِنْ فَضْلِ رَبِّهِ With all of these type of strength that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, I was mentioning, stronger than all of this, is the spiritual power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the human beings. Through that spiritual power, we see Sayyidul Mursaleen alayhi salatu wasalam. In a very short portion of the night, he goes to Baytul Maqdis. He performs salah there. He goes to the seventh heaven. He goes above that, where he goes. Then we don't even know what he went through up there. Highest point and highest position any living being can get to besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he gets to that point. He talks to Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala and he comes back. What was that power that gets him there? Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, when he was attacked by his enemies, all of a sudden he disappears. Where did he go? What power did he use? That was the power. This is this spiritual power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the human beings through which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that connection was there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him in don't worry Isa I'll just pick you up and he goes away human beings could never imagine how did this person disappear from this house we know he was right here so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-qawi al-mateen he is strong and there is firmness in that strength and once we establish that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we will have that firmness in our iman. We will have that firmness in our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This firmness and this strength will only come from Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once the person establishes his connection with Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala, today the thing that is scurrying every person is the strength that is out there. No, that's the only thing that scares everyone. You want to scare someone, you show him how strong you are. Regardless of what type of strength that is. But show him how strong you are. In whichever sense that will scare that person. And if you can show that someone that there is some strength that is more powerful than all of this. Then of course a person who is connected to that strength. The person who knows that. He will never be afraid of this strength. Say for example. Someone is standing with a gun on your head. Pointing it at your head. Everyone will be scared. But if this person knows that in my pocket I have a button, if I press it, then this person will become unconscious right there. You just press it and this person will become unconscious. Or you see a person is standing behind him and he can't see him. He is pointing the gun at your head and you smile. And he wonders that what makes you smile at this time. And 
As soon as if this person would look behind, by the way, we'll be like, oh, there is, there, he's surrounded by the cops. They're about to get him. So, when a person realizes there is more power behind this, there is more strength behind what this person is showing me and beyond what this person is showing me, then this person will not be afraid of this one. And this is what connection with Al-Qawi subhanahu wa ta'ala would do, that a person would see that there is something more powerful there. Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala's quwa is there. His quwa is there. And that is beyond anyone's imagination. When, during the time when India and Pakistan was getting separated, which means Pakistan was getting separated from India, 1947, it says in one of the histories that one of the scholars and well-known scholars, Ashraf Ali Tanwi rahimahullah, Mawana Ashraf Ali Tanwi rahimahullah, it says about him that once he was just walking out, he, he, he used to go uh, after failure for, walk, for a walk. So he goes out and one of the Hindu pundit, which means their leader, comes to him and he says, you know, I know you in this town for a long time and I know you're a good person. So my advice to you that stay at your home these days because a lot of plans have been made about you. They're, doing, they're making a lot of plans about you. So he said, I'm just warning you. So he says, I said to him, I know this and I know one thing beyond this. So he said to me, what's that? He said, I know that they must be doing these plans. I cannot figure that out. And at the same time, I also can understand and I know something beyond this and that is, there is a Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala who if he wants to protect me, then none of their plans are going to work. And if he, doesn't, if he wants to take me, then even if these people won't come, I will die at my home. So he says that Hindu said to me, if you really have that firm strength in your aqeed and your belief in him, then do whatever you want. No one can do nothing to you. So this is the quwa. This is when a person is connected to Al-Qawi, Al-Mateen, subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to establish that connection with Al-Qawi, Al-Mateen, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us strength in our iman, in our aqeedah, in our belief, in our tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqul qawli hadha. Wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa lisa'ir al-muslimina wal-muslimat. Wa akhiru da'wanan. Alhamdulillahi wa kumala.